Hello, everybody, and welcome to our next talk, Running Debian Desktop in Containers with Dash Amir Hoshe. Please, uh, an applause for him. Hi. Uh, this uh, presentation is going to be more like a demo. Uh, I will show you how to install uh, Debian desktop, desktop in a container in cloud, and then how to access this the desktop. And uh, I will do it uh, in the way that I do it, with uh, Docker containers and Docker scripts, but uh, you can do it in a, different, in, in a little bit different way. For example, you can manage Docker uh, containers with some other uh, tools, but the basic concepts uh, are uh, the same. Uh, by the way, I don't have any slides, but uh, I have a, a technical blog which describes the steps that I'm going to follow, and if you are interested to try them uh, later, uh, you can you can follow. Uh, the URL is a little bit uh, with small letters, but may maybe you can see it. Uh, I have actually uh, converted it to PDF so that it is more visible on on the screen. So, uh, in order to uh, install, uh, first of all, why uh, do we want, or why would we want to install a desktop? Uh, in a container. Uh, maybe we can do it in a virtual machine. Uh, one reason is that uh, containers are a little bit more efficient uh, than uh, virtual machines and uh, are a little bit more easy to uh, maintain uh, than uh, virtual machines. And in some cases, it may be uh, beneficial to install it in a, in a container. In this presentation, I will try to show how to install it in Docker containers and also in LXC containers. I hope that uh, the time will uh, be enough. Uh, and the steps for installing a desktop in a, a container are like, like this. First of all, we create a container from, a, uh, from the image of a minimal system. And then uh, we install desktop packages and other related packages, for example, XFCE, MATE, K uh, KDE, etc. And then we need some way to access this desktop, and we access it through the RTP protocol or through uh, SSH protocol with uh, X2Go, with tools like X2Go and uh, uh, Remina, etc. And uh, sometimes SSH and RTP. Uh, protocols, uh, need, uh, we need to open these ports uh, to the container in order to access it uh, remotely. So, uh, using Docker containers, uh, I'm going to use Docker scripts, which are a bunch of sh uh, shell scripts for, many, for managing Docker containers that I've developed. Uh, you can use some other tools, uh, the basic idea will be the same, but uh, I think that uh, these scripts, at least they allow me to do the management uh, easy, easily. And uh, the scripts for uh, Debian desktop are in this UR URL. Uh, I will is, ins uh, install also uh, LMDE. LMDE is Linux Mint Debian Edition, which is uh, the version of Linux Mint which is based on uh, Debian. So. The diagram of the containers that will be installed looks like this. Uh, we have a Docker uh, virtual environment, and uh, we have a Docker virtual LAN. In this LAN, we will install the uh, containers with different desktops. And in order to access this desktop, we'll use the uh, guaca guacamole with uh, the RDP protocol to, ac to access the desktop of this uh, 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 containers. Uh, Guacamole is a web-based tool which can be accessed from a browser. And uh, so, in order to in order to access Guacamole, uh, I also need to install a reverse proxy uh, container. And uh, Guacamole also needs a database, so I am going to install also uh, MariaDB data, uh, database. And uh, I forgot to mention that we should also uh, we need to install also Docker and uh, Docker scripts. So I am here in a server. I, I hope it is readable. Uh, are the letters big enough? Is, uh, should I increase them? 
let me try. Sorry? Yeah, but uh, it, it will go down again, so it, it doesn't solve the problem. Uh, should I make the letters bigger? Uh, is this better? So Docker is already installed. Uh, the steps for installing uh, Docker uh, are as simple as this one we, we, uh, with an automatic script, but also uh, manually it is not difficult. There are a couple of uh, manual steps to, uh, to install Docker. So I'm, I'm not going to show how to install Docker. Now, uh, installing uh, Docker scripts, first uh, I need to install the dependencies. which are already installed, actually. Then I, I'm going to clone this repo, which contains the Docker scripts, into this uh, directory. Then I go to the directory where uh, the scripts were cloned. And uh, make install will copy the scripts to some uh, uh, to the correct place in the system uh, now i install uh, the reverse proxy container this ds is a command provided by the docker scripts and uh, this pool actually is like a git clone, which uh, clones uh, the scripts for this container into the local machine. So it is actually just a git clone. And the scripts are uh, usually uh, are uh, cloned in, into this uh, directory, opt docker scripts. So we just cloned this uh, directory, this, uh, this script. And to make a container for the reverse proxy, uh, I initialize it first. And uh, initially, initialization creates a directory for the container. Initially, it contains just scripts. In this case, the default settings are OK. I don't need to customize anything. And to build the container, DS make. So it, it is running. Uh, now I install the database, which is a requirement for guacamole. Uh, again, I clone the, the scripts with DS pool. Initialize the di directory. Go, go to this directory. Again, the default settings are OK. Don't need to change anything. Uh, this container is running as well. 
Now I uh, need to install guacamole. Uh, I'm initializing in the directory with uh, this name. Uh, it can be any name, but I'm, uh, uh, I am choosing to use the domain uh, that will be used to access this uh, application uh, for, uh, for convenience, so that I don't, uh, uh, be, I'm not confused later which, one, which container is which one. So here I need to fix the domain in the settings. Uh, the, the reverse proxy will get automatically an SSL certificate for this application uh, from Let's Encrypt, but it needs to know uh, an email for the owner of this uh, of this certificate, certificate of this domain. I'm giving my email address. Then Guacamole has an admin user, and if we don't change this, uh, these two settings, at least one of them, then the script will refuse to install it for, uh, for security reasons, because th these are the default ones. So I'm just changing the password in this case. And uh, I also need to uncomment the database settings. It works with an internal database as well, but in our case, we, we need an external uh, MariaDB dat uh, database. This can be any, anything, but I choose to uh, keep them similar to, to the domain name. And then DSMake will build the uh, guacamole container. So it is uh, requesting an SSL certificate from the Let's Encrypt service. It is running. And uh, let, let's try to access this, uh, this domain in the browser. It, it should be accessible right now. And the, the username for admin is admin, and the password is pass1234. And it says that uh, no connections yet. There are no connections because we haven't uh, changed anything in the configuration of Guacamole. So Guacamole is like a gateway to access some servers uh, behind it. Uh, we will install the containers for uh, the desktops, and then uh, from the uh, we will add a connection from Guacamole to this uh, des desktop. Now let's let's try first the uh, Linux Mint Debian edition uh, container. Uh, we pull the scripts with this command. Then uh, initialize 
uh, container. I, I don't need to change anything in the settings in this case. Just DS make. Uh, now we need to add a container, uh, a connection from Guacamole to this LMDE uh, container. This connection can be added from the graphical interface here. But uh, I've also uh, created a basic command line script uh, to make it easier because this is a little bit uh, involved. Uh, so I'm here. So I can use this uh, connection, add server, and uh, the connection type is RDP. The server is the name of the container, which is LMDE1. Now, if we refresh the page, uh, we see this uh, connection, LMDE1, uh, which is of type RDP. If we click here, uh, we use the RDP protocol to access the desktop of this container. Now we need the user account, username and password. Actually, when we installed this container, uh, it created by default this file, accounts.txt, with uh, this user accounts. Uh, we could have customized uh, this one and uh, used some other username, password, some other accounts. But uh, for the time being, we can use this one, user, user one plus one. This LMD uh, container has a, a cinnamon desktop, and cinnamon is a little bit heavy. And you see that for the first time, it, it takes a little bit uh, to, uh, to get up. To start up. So I think it is still working. Okay. Yes. So this is a cinnamon desktop. And uh, where can we find uh, a terminal here? Administration. So here we are inside the uh, container. This desktop is being displayed from, from the container. It's the desktop of the container. So this, uh, we see that it is based on the latest stable uh, Debian, uh, Bullseye. I am stopping this container. Uh, now, uh, Let's install some other uh, desktop inside the container. For example, LXDE. For for this, uh, we use for uh, this desktop. We we use uh, these scripts, uh, Debian desktop. So uh, first of all, we should uh, clone them.
and then uh, initialize a container. The default set settings are OK, because by default, the desktop has this value, LXD. Uh, we can change it uh, later when we install the other desktops to some other uh, kind of desktop. Again, we, we have some. Uh, we have uh, the script have created automatically some uh, default uh, user accounts, but we need to add a connection from Guacamole to this uh, to this container. Let's refresh the browser, browser uh, in Guacamole, and we see this new connection here. Username, user1, password, pass1. And you see that LXD is really fast. So again, you see the, uh, that uh, it is based on uh, Debian 11. And I am stopping this container. Uh, now le uh, let's create uh, another uh, Container with uh, Mate desktop. In this case, I, I have to modify the settings so that uh, the variable desktop has the value mate. I need to add a connection uh, uh, again from Guacamole. This is also a fast desktop. Again, this is based on the latest Debian stable version. So I, ca I can go on and uh, create other, uh, in a similar way, other desktops for, uh, X with XFC and uh, with KDE, but it is uh, exactly the same. Uh, the steps are exactly the same. Uh, 
we just uh, have to make sure that we edit settings dot uh, sh and se set the desktop variable to the correct value in, the, in this case kde now uh, let's see how we can access this uh, the desktops of these containers directly without uh, guacamole Bec because so far we have accessed guacamole and with an rdp connection from guacamole we access the desktop of the container uh, in this case, if we don't have Guacamole as a gateway, we have to make these ports accessible, uh, 22 and uh, 3389. Uh, this port is used by uh, X2Go, by, and so we can, we can use an X2Go client to access the desktop. And this is the uh, port of the RTP protocol. So we have to forward uh, some ports from the host to these ports on the container. Uh, and then we use an uh, X2Go client and an RDP client to, to access the desktop. For example, le let's start this uh, LXDE since it is uh, lighter than LMDE and quicker. Uh, here at settings, uh, we have to make sure that uh, we forward some ports from the host to the container. Right now, there are no ports forwarded. So I am for forwarding this port to uh, 2201 to 22 and uh, 3389 1 to 3389. And uh, I have to rebuild the container since I uh, changed these settings. I can even stop uh, guacamole so that So right, right now we have this uh, this container running, and uh, we see that we have this port forwarding, and this one. So to let's try first to use uh, the RDP protocol. Uh, Remina is a is a tool that can be used. So. I'm using the, uh, this port, and uh, uh, this uh, domain actually po points to the same uh, server. Uh, and the protocol is RDP. So we are using it uh, directly. Uh, I guess that if the the initial window was a little bit bigger. Uh, it, it will be bigger. Or uh, there should be some way to make the window bigger. Maybe in the settings. Anyway, so uh, it is easy to access with an um, RDP client. Now let's see how to access it with an X2Go client.
host desktop.fs.al uh, port 2201 and login user1 uh, lxd User one, pass one. Since it is connecting through the SSH uh, protocol, it uh, asks this uh, question. Uh, I don't know. Where, uh, okay. Here, here is the menu. So uh, it is quite easy to, to work, and it is very uh, fast and efficient, I think. Turn out. Okay. So it is very easy to, to work. Dep depends also on the uh, internet connection, uh, but uh, LXE is quite lightweight. So we showed how to access it. It is the same for, for the others. Now let's try to build an LXC, LXD, uh, uh, LXC container and install in it uh, Debian desktop and access it. Uh, first of all, LXD is uh, ins installed through Snap, so we have to install Snap. Snapd. And then uh, install LXD channel uh, latest stable. Snap list, snap list. So LXD uh, is installed. Uh, now we have to initialize uh, LXD with LXD in it. Uh, I usually keep the defaults because the defaults are okay. Uh, I use BTRFS as a, a storage backend. The size of the uh, that of the disk that will be used by LXD. For IPv6, I, I don't enable it for the containers. And it is done. Right now, there are no containers yet. We are going to create one soon. So, uh, LXC uses some uh, Containers that are retrieved from uh, 
image uh, server and in this case image server is the default image server is called like this Le let's see a list of uh, some of the containers uh, of debian containers that are already available uh, images sorry uh, so we have for debian 10 debian 11 and debian 12 and so on and uh, we are actually interested in uh, containers because these images are also for virtual machines. Uh, with LXC, uh, we can manage v virtual machines as well, but in this case, we are interested just uh, to manage containers. So to, to start uh, or to create a new, uh, a new container, we use this command, LXC launch, then uh, this is the image, this is the the image debian slash eleven and this is the name of the container it is downloading the image for the first time if we start the second container then it will use it from the cache we see that the container is already running With the command lxc exec, we can uh, execute a command inside this container. So I want to execute a command in this uh, container, desktop1, named desktop1. The command that will be is executed is bash. So I just get a shell inside the container. I, uh, so the networking is not uh, reachable yet. Is not. Uh, I think it, it it is something related to the firewall that I am using. Uh, let let me try to disable the firewall or or to modify it. Okay, now uh, we see that uh, it is getting an, an IP, so most probably the network will uh, work correctly.
so it is working. No need to do uh, update upgrade because the images that we are using are updated uh, daily by uh, LXD. So uh, we, we can go to the part of installation the, in installing the desktop. Uh, we will use task cell to, to install a desktop. So first of all, we install task cell. And then with uh, list tasks, we can see what we can do with uh, task cell. And uh, uh, we install LXDE uh, desktop. So uh, it is uh, it is this one. We are we are installing this one LXDE desktop. And it is going to take some time, but not too long. Meanwhile, if you have any questions, uh, you can you can ask. I can ask. I can take questions and then continue with this one. maintain the Docker containers. Uh, I have developed Docker scripts myself, so uh, for me, they are the most easy uh, way to manage Docker uh, containers. Uh, you can do the same thing with, uh, without Docker scripts. For example, uh, simply managing Docker containers manually or with some other tools. Uh, what, what is it called? Uh, with Docker Compose. You can use Docker Compose as well or some other thing. Uh, yes, uh, this is a this is a blog post, uh, a technical uh, blog, uh, and the address is this one: uh, dashoja.fs.al docs. And uh, I, I don't know how to make this bigger. Let me try to make it bigger somehow. It is it is too big. And paste this information, this link, this URL. Okay. Uh, yeah, may maybe. I uh, I didn't know this. Okay. It's okay. Yes. Um, I posted a link on the Etherpad um, that's attached to this, the schedule session for this session. Um, uh, there are some desktop images available that don't require installing the packages manually. Um, the only ones included right now are Ubuntu uh, using the GNOME desktop, uh, OpenSUSE using KDE, and Arch Linux using GNOME. So it may be interesting to look into that later. Um, if this is something that you use a lot, you could request from Canonical that they offer um, Debian images or Flutter desktops. Just wanted to pass that along. So the question is, uh, uh, can we ask uh, Canonical to to provide another image that uh, that is frequently used? Uh, yes. Yeah. You you could ask them if if it's something you use, and and maybe they'd be able to provide more. Actually, um, I, I was just I, passing it along um, for for further um, look into because it's something that. Um, Okay. May, may simplify things for you. Thank you. Thanks. So it, it takes a little bit uh, to install it. When we install the Docker uh, images, uh, the yeah, uh, when we uh, created the Docker containers the image was already uh, pre-computed. So that is why it was so fast. Uh, 
you didn't have to download and install packages. Uh, they were included in the image. But uh, now in the case of LXZ, as uh, our friend uh, mentioned, that uh, we don't have a uh, uh, pre-built image, uh, we are installing the desktop ourselves. And this requires downloading and installing packages, and this takes uh, some, time, some time. But uh, after the desktop is installed, uh, we, we need to add a user in order to access the, this desktop. And this can be done with, the, uh, with this simple command, add user and username. And then uh, we can access uh, this desktop through guacamole, guacamole the same way that we access uh, the Docker containers. Uh, and we can also access it uh, directly. Uh, but before accessing it uh, with the X2Go server, we have to install these two packages. So in the container that we are installing, in the container that we are installing, after the installation of desktop is finished, we will have to install also uh, these two packages, X2Go server and X2Go uh, server accession, uh, in order to be able to access it uh, with an X2Go client through, through the port SSH. And uh, in order to access it through, uh, through, the, RD, through the RDP, uh, we have to install these two packages, uh, XRDP and XORG SRDP, so that we can access it through the through, uh, uh, RDP client. And also, since we need to use the port, uh, the SSH port and the RDP port, uh, we have to uh, forward to make sure that we forward some uh, ports from the host to the container. And uh, in the LXC case, in the case of LXC, uh, this can be done with this command: LXC config device add to this uh, to this container. Uh, this is the name of the of the configuration of, of the device, and then uh, proxy. Listen to this port. Uh, connect to to this, and the same thing for uh, the RDP port. And since. Uh, we need to access these ports on the host. We also have to make sure that uh, these ports are uh, allowed in the firewall, if, in case we have a firewall, which most probably we have. And for the case of firewall D, we can open these ports like this. Firewall uh, command, zone public, add port, this one. And again, add port, this one. Uh, and Fire, Firewall D has, uh, has a feature that uh, you can make temporary changes and you can, uh, you can make permanent changes. These changes uh, are uh, temporary. If we want to make them permanent, we have uh, we had also the option uh, permanent to, to these commands and then uh, uh, call firewall command reload. Uh, in case that the firewall is uh, Uncomplicated firewall, firewall UFV, UFW, uh, this is even sim simpler. UFW allow uh, this port and UFW allow uh, this port. And uh, that's it. If you want to wait until the installation is done and we can test it, uh, that's fine. But uh, Thank you very much for your wonderful talk, uh, Dasha. And Thanks for attending. You're welcome.